So San Felipe, we've won one and finished second in one. It's always been a pretty good race to me. A short sprint race, it's as fast as you can go. You know, there's really no let up. It's a good time, good tacos, and uh, good weather. Qualifying, uh, not my favorite. It's a really sandy, extra silty type course. Awesome for photos, bad for qualifying. Definitely tough because if you don't really end it with the right corner speed, you know, you're, you're into such soft terrain that you lose momentum and you're just sitting there just, gosh, I just, I need a little more, I need a little more. And so, you know, those, those turns are tough. It, it definitely challenges you to, to be quick. It's tough, like to go fast in that course without, like I said, making a mistake and without throwing it away. I mean, a couple guys were on their lid already or, or made a big mistake. So, you know, we did our best to try to get through it. I didn't really take any chances. You know, I hear the guys up front were like, hey, I was, uh, took a lot of chances. And, you know, I've never been that kind of driver that hey, I think I should waste everything I got on qualifying because it shakes out so fast in the race. You know, I think a good top 10 qualifying really puts you in the mix of the guys that are fast and if everyone's gonna run a good pace, then, then you're not really worried about like, hey, this guy's holding me up or not. So we qualified eighth. You know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wanted to be a couple spots better, but you know, you look at the, the kind of splits and to from eighth to fifth is just a couple of seconds. So, you know, you think oh, I could have probably found that somewhere. At the end of the day, we lost one fender. Uh, truck was still on all fours and, you know, race day was Saturday. Driving the truck around, we, we needed to make a couple of tweaks and took it over to Herps to have him look at something for, with us. And then Brady brought it back and went to go park it in the garage and back it in and, and uh, went to put it in reverse and zing! And I was like, did I just watch him lose reverse right now? Uh, after qualifying, we lost reverse. So not sure if we lost the reverse band or spun the spread. So as a precaution, we swapped transes. We went over to Terrible Herps and they were gracious enough to let us borrow trans. It's Friday evening. We race in, I don't know, 10 hours, so 12 hours, so we should be good. Brady had a couple late nights and uh, trying to put that thing together at the last minute after qualifying, pushed through and got it ready and the thing was perfect come race day. And I think every race is different on the nerve level. Some days I'm, I'm super nervous, some days, you know, it's okay. Uh, I don't think my nerves were too bad this time. I felt pretty confident. They put us 30 seconds apart, so right into a big silt bowl to get going. I think mile 10, you, you turn up Zoo Road and then you, it's as fast as you can go for, I don't know, what is it, 10 miles or something, just with the biggest holes and whoops that we race on all year and the fans everywhere and it's crazy and they're hanging off of the power lines and you know as I've always described it it parts like the Red Sea with some of the fans. You know you really can't get off on another line and, and try to 
to get around anybody because they're just everywhere. So, you know, it's a pretty exciting thing, exhilarating to start and go right into that and just, hey, you've got to pretty much light a, a rocket on your back and, and go for it and hope that <laughs> everything kind of works out and you're pointed straight. So it's a, it's a tough experience to explain to anybody, but it's pretty cool. Biggest thing, didn't want to make a mistake. You know, initially we get kind of into the dust pretty fast. We were into the class one cars pretty quick. A um, couple mistakes off the start with just a couple different lines and maybe a mess up. You don't see the lines the same as when you're pre-running. You're, now you're in some pretty heavy dust at times. Lawn darted off a, a pretty big wash that I, for whatever reason, thought I was going to be clear and I could just clear it. And um, that, that got my attention pretty good. But, you know, I'd say 30, 40 miles in, we, we started to kind of find our pace once we got up by Borrego, mile 60. It's just non-stop whoops the whole time. So I think just the whole combo of the Eibach truck with the spring package and the Fox shocks, we pounded this truck. I, I didn't let up. I mean, there wasn't like a pace where you just like, oh, let's work into it. We'll get to mile 110 and then we'll, you know, see where it goes and let's open her up. Like, I mean, it was from the get-go. Like you say, you go right off the zoo road in mile 10 and the, you're in it. So the suspension setup is so key. And the combo that we have with, with Fox and Eibach, it just blows my mind that it can take that pounding for that long and, and you know, it's, it's good. We can wash it off and we can go to the ball 500 now. And without that, there's no way we can be competitive, I think up front. Very fortunate to have them as partners and to have that product on our truck for sure. Yeah, I want to say like run mile 110 or something. We, I don't know what exactly happened. I think it was just like a hard ride or something. And I think I overcorrected the truck and just plowed a cactus like I've never done before. And the thing was as large as the entire hood. I know if you touch it, like it's just, it's instant pricks. So I panicked for a second. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like I, all I could think of was like, I wish I had a rake. I could just push this thing off the hood. And Brady goes, slam on the brakes. I'm like, good idea. And I slam on the brakes and the whole thing slid off. But there is pieces you know, one that sat next to my leg the entire race that just kept poking me all day. Uh, and again, you can't reach down and just grab it or it's gonna be stuck to your hand. I mean, Brady was, I think he told me he had 15 needles or something he pulled out himself after, after the race. Like, I think I had one. Um, you always put it on the passenger side, you don't put it on your side. That was pretty crazy. Uh, I've always heard the stories of guys hitting cactus like that and that was my first kind of real experience of really plowing one. About mile 140-ish, I don't know what happened. Uncharacteristic of me, I mean, I smacked a rock, you know, clipped a sidewall and, and got a flat. And it's like, gosh darn it, that is just so dumb. Got going and, and about, it must have been a mile or two later and I'm just like, I smacked another rock. Just now pushing too hard to try and make up some time. And another sidewall and, and I tell Brady and he's like, no, no, that's, that's not, it's not flat. And he's, he's reading the pressures and, uh, and he'd go about another half mile or whatever. And he goes, does that feel flat? And I'm like, yeah, it does. I told you, I'm pretty sure I hit something. And he goes, yeah, it's, it's flat. And I'm like, God, I can't believe that. I just get two flats in a matter of a couple of miles. I, I've never done that ever. So I get out, help him change it. We get back going. Now I have to be gentle and I have no spares. Little by little, catch the guys that were that passed us. You know, one's changing a flat, the other guy he was losing his brakes, so he was kind of limping along a little bit. So I was like, this race is coming back to us. So we pushed down really hard through Matomi, trying to get this trophy truck, and couldn't get him, couldn't get him. And I was just praying, like he, I had one line left at the end of Matomi, and I'm just like, I'm hoping he doesn't have this, and he didn't. And sure enough, we pull up just right as the lines merge, he comes right there, and I give him a nice little love tap and uh, he's out of the way. Cause I, I knew if, he, if we didn't catch him at the end of Tomi, I mean, there's probably no reason I was gonna catch him to the finish. It's as fast as you can go, pretty rough. And uh, I felt like that was our only chance to try to push. We had, um, I think 10 minutes to the leader and, and about another seven or something to Serapis. It's like, okay, well, let's see pushing. Let's see what happens. If they make a mistake, we'll, we'll be there. Otherwise we're there for third.
coming down and, and to be able to see the ocean and, and get to the finish line is such a, such a good feeling um, and to know we did well. Always a relief, a sigh of relief for sure to get there and get to the finish line and BFG hands me a hat and they're like, you're second. I'm like, second? Where did the other guy go? <laughs> you know, all in all, pretty good day. Earned myself a couple mistakes, but uh, we fought back hard and, and uh, it shows here we are, second physical across the line. So pumped to get this Eibach truck uh, across the finish line again and you know, just, oh man, what a, what a day. All things is here, a couple flats, the tranny mishap, like it's a roller coaster of emotions, this sport and all, but I, I had the attitude of, even when I got down with the flats, just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. It's crazy how this thing will just kind of reel back into you. And I think that was pretty much our day for San Felipe, you know, aside from the flats, the truck was great, pretty prepped an awesome truck, no mechanical issues, you know, just um, smacked a couple rocks, which that happens. <laughs>